All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessing, and many salutations to you, elect, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom to you, elect, also that believe in this word of our testimony, that are believers, all right, and those consist of you men. And you women and you children that believe in the words of our testimony, which this testimony comes in the spirit of prophecy, which is the true testimony of Yahweh Shai. I write it, Yahweh Shai is the name of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. I write in Yahweh is the name of the God of Israel in the Bible. That's his real name. It's not God. It's not Jehovah. It's not Yahweh. It's not Yahuwah. It is Yahweh. And again, his only begotten son's name is Yahweh Shai. Okay, I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, coming at you all with another lesson through the spirit. Lord's willing, this lesson here is edifying. Okay, and this lesson is going to touch up on um, a series of lessons that I've been doing titled Hidden Manna. All right, and within these series of lessons, this is pretty much certain secrets that we find in the scriptures. And um, pretty much uh, it paints a bigger picture when you read certain events in the Newer Testament, in the New Testament. Via example, all right, we believe that King Solomon is Yahweh Shai. And there are certain scriptures you can find in the Old Testament to show that it's talking about Yahweh Shai, but it'll refer to him as Solomon. Okay, you can read Psalm 72. Okay, and there, there's an abundance of, of different examples. But, um, you know, if, if for you newer listeners that might not know, if you are interested, if you just go on my page and scroll down, you'll see certain lessons that'll be titled Hidden Manna. And you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Also, you can find Yahweh Shai written within the law. Certain laws that are written of really is talking about Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai had fulfilled the law. All right. You, again, you can find other examples and not even just Yahweh Shai, but there's other things that are written of about particular people. And we believe certain of them um, had came back the reincarnation in the New Testament. Via example, we believe that that um, Daniel is John the Revelator, the reincarnation. We believe that King David is Peter in the reincarnation. All right. And there's numerous other examples. Uh, Elijah is John the Baptist, the reincarnation. And you can find this all really through the scriptures. But I mean, if you want to go into lessons and find those, all right, just type in Great Millstone and just just type whatever in afterwards. And I, I believe you'll find the answer. The Spirit's been having us go in very, go very heavy. All right, into these scriptures and delve into prophecy, delve into the secrets, delve into exhortation. All right, because we're in the time of the end. All right, so this truth is definitely being pushed in overdrive. Okay, but without further ado, this lesson is going to be hidden now. All right, and this is another little clue here in the scriptures that shows that um, Peter most definitely is King David in reincarnation. All right, and as I go into this lesson, this also is exhortation. All right. It's also his exhortation to 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 give us hope in the things that's to come. All right. Because I'm going to go into the example of Peter being locked up in jail around the time of the Peshach in Acts of 12 chapter. And we are approaching a time. All right. When we understand that this devil is going to come down with great wrath, as the scriptures say. All right. And, and really, we got to our hope in the Lord has to be at an all time high. Our confidence in the Lord has to be at an all time high. And what had happened to our father Peter here in this example in Acts of 12 chapter, we have to expect particular of these events happening to us here within this day as well. OK, so this lesson is also going to be an um, exhortation and to help aid in the hope of the Lord and what to expect when that day comes. All right. So this is the book of Acts chapter 12. I'm going to start from the top. And it says now about that time. Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. All right. So this is John, the revelator's brother, James. All right. You got James and John who went by the names of the sons of thunder. OK, now um, out of all the disciples, OK, out of the 12, James was the first martyr out of the 12. He was the first one to die for the name of the Lord. OK, and he got beheaded. He got beheaded by Herod. OK, so it says, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. 
Then were the days of unleavened bread. And the days of unleavened bread, again, goes to uh, the Passover. All right, Peshach. Okay. The days of the unleavened bread are the seven days you eat bread. All right, starting, starting at even of the night of the Passover. Verse 4 says, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four. Hold on, I'm going to turn my... Um, I'm going to turn my notifications off. It says when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. OK, and for you newer listeners, OK, um, Easter is not biblical. Easter is not biblical at all. OK, you got to pick particular bones out. Now, remember in the previous verse, it went into the days of unleavened bread. Now, when you go into this word Easter here, when you go into this word Easter here in the blue letter, that word in the Greek is going to be called Pascha, Pascha, okay? And in the Hebrew, it's Pesach, okay? It even shows it in 86453, okay? It's Pesach, which goes into uh, the Paschal or Pesach sacrifice, which was a custom to be offered for the people's deliverance from old, from Egypt. Again, this is going into the Passover. It's not talking about Easter. All right, Easter, the name Easter really derives from Ishtar, which is a Canaanite deity and a fertility goddess. Okay, that's where they get the bunny and the egg because rabbits are known for the mass production, re reproduction. All right, and the egg, again, goes into reproductive, reproduction. Okay, and that's what the pagans the pagans, uh, they worship Ishtar, which her Babylonian name, all right, is Semiramis, okay, which another name for is the Queen of Heaven, but that's what that goes to, all right? So when it says Easter right here, it's not talking about Easter, all right? It's talking about the Passover. So James was slain on the Passover, just like Yahweh Shai was crucified, all right, on the Passover, okay? It says... The Paschal lamb, the lamb the Israelites were accustomed to slay and eat on the 14th day of the month of Nisan, which which goes to the first month of the year, the first month of their year in memory of the day on which their fathers preparing to depart from Egypt were bidden by the Most High to slay and eat a lamb and to sprinkle their doorposts with his blood. And the destroying angel and that destroying angel was Yahweh Shai, seeing the blood might pass over their dwellings. And it says Hamashiach crucified is likened to the slain Paschal lamb. OK, so when you go into this Easter here, it's going into the Passover. That's why in verse three, it said, then were the days of unleavened bread. Like I had expounded on earlier, that goes into the seven day feast of bread, starting on the night of the Passover. All right. Which is the 14th day of the month of the first year. OK, so when you continue here in verse five, after Peter was apprehended, Around the time of the Passover, when he was taken to prison, it says, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto the most high for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night. All right. So so Peter was supposed to be slain that evening. Just as James was slain earlier, Peter was supposed to be in their eyes slain that evening. OK. And it says and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, all right? So this verse 6 here is the key point in this lesson going into the hidden manner that I'm talking about, showing you another hidden example, all right, that Peter is David, King David, okay? So it says, and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. Remember that, bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him and they light shine in the prison. And he smote Peter on his side. And it's funny because when you read it in um, first Kings chapter 19, when Elijah was running from uh, Ahab and Jezebel, when he was starving, he fell asleep. The angel smote him on his side and woke him up to, to feed him, to feed him that bread and that water. OK, so that angel, that angel smote Peter, hit Peter on his side to, to wake him up. OK, he woke Peter up because Peter was asleep. OK, so he smote Peter on the side and woke him up 
And it says, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And you got to think about it. He was bound with two chains. And as soon as the angel smote him and Peter got up, those chains just fell off. All right. Now, how that happened, uh, we don't know. We're going to find that out in the kingdom exactly the visual, the visual of how that, that event transpired. OK, but the simple fact of the matter is the Lord worked a miracle. There was prayer from the church for Peter to be released, for Peter to be saved. And the Lord hearkened unto the prayers of the church, of the saints. And he has sent his angel down, OK, to, to help aid Peter. And those chains fell off of Peter. And I, I made the statement earlier going into these are things that we have to expect when this day comes. All right. These are the expectations that we have to have in our mind. OK, what's being read right here is a shadow of things to come as pertaining to the church here in these latter days. OK, just as it pleased the Jews that those individuals were slain, that those disciples were slain, it's going to please Jake's and it's also going to please Eomites. All right. To, to kill us, to perform particular things unto us, man. OK, they're going to try to rejoice in our downfall. OK, especially when there's miracles that are being done. OK, they're going to try to rejoice. But whatever event happens and it's the spirit of um, the brother, I told one myself went into a lesson a few days ago, going into how the angels are going to aid in lifting up that standard. When that time comes, the angels are here to help and minister unto us. That's why you read it in Hebrews, the first chapter. It says the angels are ministering spirits and their spirits of fire meant to minister unto those that are heirs of salvation. And when you go into that word minister, that word means to serve. So this is an example of the angel of the Lord ministering unto Peter, who was an heir of salvation. All right. And he had served Peter and he helped Peter in the way that he helped Peter was releasing his releasing his uh, his chains. All right. Loosening his bonds. OK, so that's what had taken place. It says arise up quickly and his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said unto him, gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And it was not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. So it was so quick in, in the way that it happened. Peter thought he saw a vision. But lo and behold, it actually happened. Like, for example, you know, when you're, you're asleep at night and you have a dream. All right. That something happens and, and it's miraculous and it happens and you wake up and it's just a dream. So in the midst of that, while all that's going on, Peter thought he was dreaming. OK, but that had actually transpired. There's certain dreams that feel so real that you believe they're actually happening. And there's certain events that happen that are so miraculous that you would think to yourself, it's got to be a dream. OK, and these are the things that we have to expect coming up. OK, in this near future. OK, but going back to the point. All right. The angel had aided Peter. All right. And those chains fell off. So what had happened? The bonds of Peter were loosened by the aid of the Lord because Peter was a servant of the Lord. OK. Now, I said earlier I was going to go into the example of David to show you that Peter is definitely David in the reincarnation. So this is going to be the book of Psalms, chapter 116. And I'm going to start at verse 15. And it reads, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. All right. Now, James, James was smitten and that was precious in the eyes of the Lord. All right. Peter was bound up in chains to be smitten. That was precious in the eyes of the Lord. Got to think about ourselves. We die daily here in this truth. And that's why the scriptures say we are like in a sheep brought forth to the slaughter. And that's why the scriptures say. All right. Though our outward man perisheth, our inward man is renewed day by day. The scriptures also say we die daily. OK, so every day that you're in this ministry, putting forth this work. All right. Enduring hardships, enduring tribulation, you're dying daily. And that's precious in the eyes of the Lord. So how much more can you apply it when when real tribulation comes here within this near future? All right. And just as it was precious in the eyes of the Lord of that event that had happened with Peter, it was so precious that the Lord sent his angel down to loosen Peter from those chains, to loosen those bonds from Peter. OK, because what Peter was doing in the eyes of the Lord was precious. OK, and you got to look at it for what you're doing in this ministry. What you're doing is precious in the eyes of the Lord. 
So when things like that happen, these are things that we got to expect from the Lord, man. These are things that we hope in the Lord, all right? Because that word expect or expectation goes into the word hope, all right? So these are events that we hope for when that time comes. And if you're doing your due diligence and doing what you have to do in the spirit, best believe the Lord is going to lift up that standard and he will aid you, okay? When that angel came and smote Peter and those chains fell off, that was a standard that was lifted. You read it, all right, in the scriptures where it says, the enemy shall come like a flood, then the Lord shall lift up a standard. These are the things that we have to expect in this day that's approaching, okay? So Psalms 116 and 16, it says, O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. <laughs> Is that not what happened with Peter? All right, David said, thou hast loosed my bonds. All right, and best believe there were examples when David was in hardship, when he was in trouble, all right, and the Lord aided David. I mean, the Lord delivered David up in a chariot when you read it in Psalms, the 18th chapter. Okay, so the Lord helped David in many ways, all right? So when I was reading that, I just found that interesting how that was worded, all right, where David said, the Lord has loosed my bonds. And when you read it in Acts, the 12th chapter, when Peter was bound up between those soldiers, all right, and he was bound in those chains and the angel smote him, that's literally what happened to Peter. Those bonds or those chains were loosened from Peter and he had escaped out of prison. OK, now, when you go into this word bonds here, the word here in the Hebrew is mawasar. OK, and it says a band or a bond. OK, and let me hear, see here. It says figuratively restraint. OK, and was not Peter restraint? When you go in here in the in the Hebrew lexicon, it says uh, specially used. Hold on, tap to view it. Specially used of the bonds of a yoke. It says often metaphorically Psalms two and three one o seven, but it says it is a yoke. Okay, so David is saying here in Psalms one sixteen and sixteen that the Lord loosened his yoke. Okay, now I'm going to read this here in the in the NLT version. Psalms 116 and 16 says, O Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your servant. Born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. <laughs> you see? Okay, and that's actually what happened to Peter in the book of Acts, the 12th chapter. Okay, so like I said, when going into the hidden manna, these are little secrets, little nuggets that you can find in the scriptures that can correlate to the servants to show who they were and who they were before and who they might have been later on. OK, another example, I said Daniel and John are the same. We believe he's the same, the reincarnation. And the thing is, too, we believe this by faith. OK, we believe this by faith. OK, but when you read it in Daniel, the 12th chapter, loosely paraphrasing, it says the books were sealed. All right. Around that time, when you read it in Revelation, the fifth chapter, which is the revelation of John, the revelator. It says that the books were loosened. OK, so with Daniel, it was told the books were sealed. And with John, it said the books were loosened. Those seals were loosened. OK. And I mean, for for the scoffers and the gainsayers that are out there, you can say we sound crazy. You can say that could apply with anybody. I mean, you know, you are ultimately meant to be a stumbling block anyway. But for you believers that are out there that are listening and believe in this testimony, these are clues that show you. OK, these are clues that shows us that. We ain't tripping. We know what we're talking about through the spirit. But you got to see these things in the spirit in order to completely comprehend it. And the spirit of the Lord has to be dealing with you. OK, so just going into that example, that's exactly what happened with Peter in Acts 12. The Lord loosened his bonds, just as David said in that prayer in Psalms 116 and 16. All right. And again, I made the statement earlier saying that these are things that we have to hope and expect. All right. Because as these things had happened to our fathers, when the Lord had um, aided our fathers in particular difficult situations. These are things that we have to expect coming along in this day here that's approaching. OK, and I'm going to end this off here in the book of Jeremiah 29 and 11. And it's one of my recent favorite scriptures to go into, especially in this day that's approaching. OK, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. OK, now I'm going to read this in the NLT for I know the plans I have for you and the Lord has has plans for us specifically. 
Okay, he has plans for us specifically. That's why you read it here. I'm sorry, I know I said I was going to end it off there, but the, the spirit moving right now. What can you do, right? But when you read this here in the book of 2nd Ezra, the second chapter, and I'm going to read this here in the, uh, in the 26th verse, it says, As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall none of them perish, for I will require them from among thy number. And when you go into that word require there, it says need for a particular purpose. OK, so the Most High has a particular purpose set for all of us going into Acts 12 chapter. The reason why Peter didn't get, get didn't get killed. All right. By hair out around that time, because Peter had a different purpose than James. OK, now it doesn't make Peter better than James, even though Peter was the head of the church. But Peter had a particular purpose that was set for him right there. All right. He had a particular purpose. The most I had a particular plan for Peter. So he intervened and had that angel come down and free Peter from those bonds. OK. And just as I'm reading here in Jeremiah 29 and 11 in the NLT, it says, for I know the plans I have for you. So each and every one of us, the most high has a particular purpose, a particular plan for every single last one of us. All right. However, the Lord wants to use us to glorify his name is going to be whatever he has designed and de uh, designated for. OK, but it says, for I know the plans I have towards you for you, saith the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. All right. So that's that expected end. And these are things that we have to expect when this day comes. All right. These are things that we have to expect, especially knowing that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has a particular purpose set aside for us. And you know what? I'm going to end it off here in Romans in Romans, the eighth chapter. All right. And then I'm done officially. Lord willing. <laughs> So this is the book of Romans, chapter eight, verse 20. Uh, I believe it's in verse 28. Let me see here. Yeah. This is Romans 8 and 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of the most high. All right. Hey, King David said the Lord had loosed my bonds. That's intercession. All right. When that angel came down and smote Peter on the side and loosened those chains, that was intercession. All right. We have to expect the Lord is going to make intercession. OK, if you laying on that bed and they're trying to put a chip in, you have to believe that the most high is going to make intercession and lift up that standard and save you out of that tribulation. These are things that we have to hope, especially since we know that the thoughts of the most high towards us are not thoughts of evil. All right. But they're thoughts of good. And he has a particular plan. That's set aside for us. OK, verse 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the most high to them who are called according to his purpose. OK, and when you go according to that purpose, that is a plan. So every single last one of us. All right. The most High has a purpose or a plan set aside for every single last one of us. All right. And that plan is for good. OK, because you have to believe that the most high loves you. And if he loves you, he ain't going to allow no wickedness to touch you. He ain't going to allow you to be just taken out. All right. In a very wicked way. All right. Now, James, the brother of John, was killed because that was a set purpose and plan that the Most High had set for James. OK, but that wasn't of evil. All right. James was a witness. He died a martyr. And he's of the 12. So best believe James. All right. Has a lot. Uh, a heavy lot in the kingdom. All right. And whoever James is, whoever he is back here in the reincarnation today. All right. Best believe he's going hard and best believe he's executing that particular purpose or plan that the most High has for him. And since he is one of the 12, you got to expect it to be something major. <laughs> Not saying that just because he's the 12, it has to be the most major thing. All right. But hey, man, he's of the 12. OK, so, hey, man, you read it in, in Revelation, the 12th chapter. Those 12 gates are going to have the tw names of the 12 disciples. James name is going to be on one of those gates. All right. So he has a very heavy lot, whoever he is in the spirit. All right. Whether he's already passed and gone or whether he's here, he, he, he there's a heavy lot, something heavy that the Lord has set aside for him. All right. Just like every single last one of us. OK, but I'm going to end it off on that. I believe I tackled the point. But again, this here was one of those hidden manna lessons. 
All right, just to show you uh, another little secret here, but also to uh, to exhort you, you individuals. All right, in the church. All right, to continue to press forward, and continue to go, and to know that the Most High is going to use divine intervention. Okay, to give us that expected end as we long for. But I'm going to end it off on that. Lord's willing, this was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you elect across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. And Shalom to you believers that believe in the words of our testimony, which consists of you men, you women, and you children. We almost out of here. Stay strong, stay girt up in the spirit, and only believe. Shalom.